This is the Energy 2.6 TM. It's kind of a, a mountain bike, electric bike, and actually the battery on this is, is one of the highlights. It's from Rechargeable Power Energy it's a company out of Las Vegas. They, they do sales, um, offer good support. It's got like a two year warranty, which is pretty awesome. But the rest of the bike is, is kind of like piecemeal, different, different systems from other companies. And so the drive system is by uh, Eight Fun or Bafong, if you've heard that before. Uh, along with sort of the the display and the different different control pad that you've got up here, uh, the frame I've seen this before. It's kind of generic, sort of uh, sort of an Asian import. Um, it's not the most stiff I've noticed when I'm riding because it is sort of this longer uh, single bar. You know, there isn't like a top tube and a down tube. It's just that one big long tube, uh, and that makes it a little easier to step over. It's kind of more like a mid step design, but it is a little bit heavier. This bike weighs about 61 pounds, just weighed it a minute ago. Um, and that's, you know, it's kind of a question mark, but it helps to keep it a little bit more affordable. And, you know, some people like the design. I think it looks, it looks decent, especially paired with this nice uh, XCR suspension fork from Suntour. It's actually a really, you know, solid component here. It's got remote lockout, so you could be riding and, um, you know, potentially lock this out if you're cruising around in the neighborhood using it to get to work and then it could double as a hardtail sort of a trail bike maybe a mountain bike on the week weekends uh, if, if you're that kind of person the downside of trying to use this as a commuter is that there aren't really any mounting points here maybe, maybe right here you know we've got a couple of threaded eyelets on the the rear dropout area but you know and and there's there is a mounting point right here so maybe it's possible to put a rack on but it's just maybe not as easy you might want to put a beam rack but then again you have a challenge of having this X or EXA form 525 uh, suspension seat post, and I actually like this. I don't, I don't want to hate on the seat post suspension because <laughs> that partners really well with the the suspension fork, and it smooths out the ride. I'm all about that. It's great to have comfort. You know, it's got this big oversized saddle, but it's kind of a it's a mishmash of parts here because some of the, the some of the stuff's like pretty high end. You know, we've got these hydraulic Tektro Dorado. Uh, disc brakes 203 millimeter rotor on the front. I mean look at that. It's huge and then on the back We've got 180 millimeter rotor um, Those are solid and being Tektro they've actually got the integrated uh, Brake lever inhibitor. So if you tap that it's gonna stop the motor while you're riding like that's all the stuff you'd want But the frame choice is just kind of like eh, you know It's I guess I'd prefer a more traditional frame something that's lighter something that's gonna let me use the rear rack more easily uh, This does come with these fenders, you know, they're they're okay. Um, you've actually got decent coverage here in the front, not not great, um, and the rear kind of keeps the rooster tail off your back. But it's it's just a little bit cheaper, you know. This this setup is kind of fun looking and stuff, but you know it has a few few little issues here and there. And the price is actually twenty four hundred bucks, so it's not super cheap. I mean, there are other are other electric bikes in this price range that just seem a little bit more refined. You know, they offer one thing or another. And better. Um, this one spans the gaps though in a, in a neat way. You've got this good adjustable angle stem um, and I guess I say good because it's nice to have the ability to adjust but if you are riding off-road I've noticed that sometimes these can get loose you know it starts to, to rattle and jiggle and it gets looser and looser and so you might want to bring a key an allen key to tighten that up or just to, to kind of be careful and that's back to asking yourself like is this really a mountain bike or is it just kind of a cool looking around town bike and if it is just a cheaper around town bike then you know it feels kind of expensive to me i do like that it's got this nice led brake light kind of thing built in but you'll notice that the fender almost completely blocks it so maybe from the side you've got some visibility but it's it's not perfect the battery pack here weighs about 9.3 pounds and that's because um it's actually 16 amp hours so, you know, enormous, really, really impressive in terms of capacity here. And it's got a little like um, USB diagnostic system so you can plug it in and uh, maybe the shop or whatever could, could kind of upgrade your systems. Um, but it's also doubles as just a charge port. So if you had your, you know, your smartphone or music player in your pocket, you could like run a USB up and have some power. Battery is removable. There's the key over here. Can be charged on or off the frame and i noticed that when when you mount it it goes like boop, and it like squeaks because this thing has a built-in alarm system with like a key fob so it's kind of like your car when you walk away from it you can be like doo -doo -doo, and it like protects your bike with you know loud sounds if someone tries to steal it um 
just kind of interesting. And by the way, the battery would match. This one's just white because it's a demo bike, um, but normally it'd be black and it'd, it'd look great on there. I, you know, it does keep the weight relatively low and center on the frame along with the mid drive. And that's really the star of the show. I haven't even really talked about it, but this is a BBSO2 from like, an 8 Fun or a Bafang. Um, it's 500 watt output, which is pretty solid. It uses kind of like a cadence sensor system. It doesn't have shift detection or anything. So, you know, the benefit of a, a mid-drive is that you can, you can usually have like easier wheel maintenance on the front and rear. And the front wheel, wheel on this bike does have quick release, but the rear wheel does not. So you're going to need some tools, but it's still a little bit easier. You can see there's like a seven-speed Shimano cassette right here. And that's, you know, pretty good, pretty good, you know, it's, again... We got like Shimano Turney, so it's low, low level components um, here, but seven speeds is good for, for getting around town. And um, again, you're gonna be able to get a, get more efficiency and range with it, with that mid drive and, um, and the whole maintenance thing, which is kind of like maybe a missed opportunity here with the w lack of quick release. Good pedals, kind of like nice oversized, good traction on those. Um, yeah, I guess I think that's that's most of, of what I wanted to cover. The the cabling does run through the frame, which is nice, keeps it out of the way. And uh yeah. These nice sort of, you know, basic ergonomic grips. They don't have lockers or anything, so if you really bear down on it it could spin. And again, the stem thing, like there's you know, it's it's there's some room for improvement here, uh for sure. CST mountain bike traction all season tires. And it looks like 26 by 2.35 so this is a standard wheel size going to be more affordable to replace the tires and the tubes and stuff and going to be a little bit more nimble up front easier to handle but not quite as much rolling momentum or gap spanning potential and you know overcoming obstacles um yeah but it, it does keep the frame a little bit lower and kind of complements that mid-step design okay and the battery again is 36 volt 16 amp hour so that's the real one of the real upgrades on this bike is gonna be increased range. And I did notice that in order to activate the bike, you do have to kind of uh, twist the key all the way to the right and then the light comes on, but you can't actually take the key out. So depending on your setup, you might have a keychain dangling. And I'm not sure if that is what happened here, but you can see like there's a chip on the frame and that's one of the potential you know, downsides of, of having to leave the key in. And then we come up here and press this little power button. And you can see our assist level right here. And I've noticed that in zero assist, you actually can use uh, use the bike. So it does have kind of a throttle mode, which is nice. I, I like that, especially if you're just kind of cruising along, you don't want to be surprised by pedaling and have the motor kick in. You've got your uh, miles per hour, so speed, and then a couple of little trip meters and things down here. I wanted to say this is pretty reachable right here even with your hand on the grip, but there is a little bit of blocking happening because of the remote lockout. So worth keeping in mind. And then over here again, the, the, the shifting mechanisms, this is a big like thumb SIS index kind of thing. A um, little bit of a reach since the throttle is right here, but I, I like that they went with a trigger throttle because you know it's not gonna compromise your grip. Um, although it does seem like they, they went with a half grip over here. And one of the options is for a twist throttle. So it kind of feels like you know, you might not have as much room to hold on if you get the trigger throttle option like we have here. You might want to keep that in mind. I'd still get the trigger for off-roading and stuff just to, you know, more stability, but um, just an interesting choice right there. And then again, this, this shifter, it's just, I'd, I think I'd prefer the triggers and stuff like this versus having to reach and having this, it's just, it's just lower in components right there. So there's, there's kind of the cockpit overview. I'm going to go ahead and arrow up. Um, looks like we've got nine levels of assist, so you've got nice fine increments. I think this this display and everything actually lets you sort of update and change the number of assist levels if you want. Now you got some helicopters flying over here. <laughs> That's sort of fun. Okay, so get the kickstand up. I'm gonna go back to assist level zero and just start off in throttle mode so you can kind of see that. Okay, and 
it did have a little bit of a, a harder time starting because I'm in the seventh gear, and that's the hardest gear, so the motor's working, working more. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down. Now I'm just pedaling like normal, and I'm gonna do throttle again. Really gets you going. We're up to almost 20 miles per hour, super fast. Do a little bit of off-roading here. Nice. Almost hit that 20 mile per hour mark again, just cruising on the grass. Um, definitely a, a good feeling of power here. I'm in the third gear and I uh, was just using throttle mode and assist level zero. Um, it's pretty satisfying. Woo. There we go. Now I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up in assist level nine and just see what that's like. Feeling pretty responsive there, not too bad. And you can override assist with the throttle, so that's cool, you know experience this thing offers is actually pretty good um, and because the battery is is mid mounted even though this does have the kind of the longer frame that that feels a little sloppier it's it's really not too bad you know aside from the the weight and frankly the price feeling a little bit high it's it's not a bad bike it's not a bad bike and some of the components and stuff some of the upgrades like those disc brakes you know hydraulic they're really smooth uh, easier to activate with just a finger or two and then having the remote lockout on the suspension. I mean, it seems like overkill because I don't know who's going to be like doing really hardcore off-roading with this and be like, I need to lock it out right now. Or, you know, it's a little bit ridiculous. And I think I'd almost prefer to have more handlebar space than having a remote lockout on this bike. But, um, you know, all in all, I guess that's that's kind of the, the quick overview. Um, so, yeah, you know. It's the Energy Cycles 2.6 TM for the full write-up on this and other Energy Cycles. I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com.